Kenny, I, I am Catholic. Francesco was right up my alley. I think more important than that, though, I think this documentary is a very universal international documentary that no matter what denomination or what faith you are, this is something that will be very value added to anyone's experience. Can you speak to that, the universality of your documentary? I think you just nailed this because you see a Jewish boy who'd been raised and born in former Soviet Union where I experienced atheism. And later on my journey, life journey, I kind of reconnected with my Jewish roots, but still I found a lot of humanity, a lot of mor moral compass, uh, universal messages and actions in Pope Francis. And I think that's what the message of Jesus Christ was from the old days, because what I see in Pope Francis, he brings love, hope, humanity to every corner of the world, no matter of your religious beliefs, of your color scheme, no matter if you believe it or not, no matter of your sexual orientation, he cares about every human being exactly like Jesus Christ. So for me, that's the uniqueness of this person, that the humbleness of this person, that the love that he's spreading between us. And I think that's the universality of the story. Were you surprised, you know, when someone of power, when he or she gets onto that proverbial place on the hill, in this case, you have Rome, one can shield themselves away from humanity and society. And in your, in your three years of researching and doing this and working side by side, is that one of the many surprises that you had that he was very hung? He's hungry for me in as far as connecting with people. And you're talking about building a bridge as opposed to a wall. Was that one of the many things uh, that surprised you about just being close to him and learning about him? I, I, I think for him, being behind the walls of Vatican is a big struggle because he wants to be close to the people. And even in pandemic, we seeing him running to Iraq, literally running to Iraq. Because he wanted to be with the people. He wanted to bring this message of peace to the Vortorn country to show that interface dialogue, we can coexist between all the nations, all the religious beliefs. And I think one of the ama amazing things that I've also been able to accomplish in the movie, take us back into Argentina, where Jorge Maria Bergoglio, Cardinal Bergoglio of Pope Francis today, was living on the streets of Buenos Aires with the people, being for the people. And we can see that nothing changed. It's the same humble human being who had been there before he became Cardinal, who had been there before he became Archbishop of Buenos Aires, and who had been the same person before, before he became Pope. And he's still the same person even being Pope or Bishop of Rome. So at the end of the day, I was trying to show that nothing changed what was surprised to me, his ability to be just a human being like you and me in our conversations, in our meetings, because you're not feeling the superiority when you're talking to the leader of any country or any state. You usually not feeling exactly comfortable when you are with some uh, high profile kind of uh, uh, government official. And here you have a pope who is on top of the spiritual guidance of the church and the head of state. And he is like your brother, like your father, like your relative and like your best friend. And he's ready to give you a hand of help any day and night minute. And that's the beauty of this human being. So that's the big surprise. You know, again, in your documentary, you, you briefly touch upon his two years, I guess, stay or stint and working it over in Cordoba and how that changed him. And it brought a little, so much more humility to his spirit. And wondering for you, since you're a producer, you're co-DP, you're the director, if you wanted to personally, you could make movies for entertainment and there's nothing wrong with that, but you seem to have a driving force in your own personal life. Was there a turning point for you where you said, you know, you want to make an impact with the uh, the movies, the documentaries you make. But you know what? I think after being on fire and seeing how my storytelling can inspire people to stand against uh, dictatorships and oppression, Chile, uh, Venezuela, uh, Nicaragua, Hong Kong in 2019, being on fire 
became inspiration to them. My previous movie about Ukrainian uh, revolution, where in fact, on the grounds of Maidan, I saw how interface all the religious groups together with the people united achieved this. And I saw, wow, interface is working. And I saw how movie can inspire people. So I saw this call for action. And then I brought the human voices of innocence from the Syrian grounds of the war. And I saw, wow, I can open hearts and minds of the people, educate people on the on this situation and bring the change. So I guess through my previous project, learning the process, seeing how I, as the filmmaker, can do some change to this world, bring change, I decided to take all the disasters that we humans created and to find somebody who can care about us humans and show us the past, past to the safer future, specifically in these days, in the pandemic days, where we are really need to stop everything, reevaluate what we're doing and make a decision. What needs to stay from our actions in the past, our horrible actions in the past, and what true good actions, good deeds we need to do to go into the safe future for us, for our planet, for our kids. And I think that was the desire to make this movie and specifically pandemic helped me to reshape this image. And thank you so much for your time. Really enjoyed your documentary. Thank you. Thank you for helping to spread this message. Thank right. you. Take care. Okay.